been there previously six other times. This is my seventh trip down there. It's a little 10 day uh, trip down. We go down, we help out the people to build a church. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a uh, missionary down there named Humberto Del Arca. A really good organization going down there. What he does, he trains missionaries to, uh, or trains actually Hondurans to be pastors and then they start churches. I guess I just have a heart for it. I have a heart for the people and just to be able to go down there and serve and I actually probably get more out of it than I give out of it. And it's just, it just, I just really touches me to go down there and to work with these people who have nothing but are willing to give you whatever they have and then to give them a little bit that they can uh, hopefully have a, you know, a church to meet at and somewhere that they could minister to other people and get other people to come to church and then start other churches. There is a language barrier, definitely, but uh, the kids, a lot of the kids will try and help you out and they can speak a little bit of English, you know, sometimes, but not much, and you just do the best you can. I mean, we get there, we start working, the kids dig right in, they start working to you, they grab a shovel. If you're if you're shoveling some dirt and you stop for a second, you need a breather, all of a sudden you look, your shovel's gone. Some kids got it, they're shoveling, and these kids just don't stop. Well, so I'd give my shovel back and be like, hey, what's that, you know, look at it, kiss, kiss, and I'd take my shovel from them, right? So these kids, man, they're smart. They learn fast. So we, the last day we were there with the Hondurans, we went to the river. And Jim, man, the pastor, there's this girl, Dania, she was racing with him across the river, you know, and they're racing, going back and forth. And she wouldn't stop. And it, it wasn't really that cold, but she was freezing. She'd get out of the water, she's all freezing, you know, we're like, oh, you could be cold, but it was cold for her, I guess. And then, um, so they're racing, and she wouldn't stop racing. And all of a sudden she goes, yes, and Jim looks and she goes, takes off down the river, you know, and Jim goes, oh, what happened? Oh, man, she nailed him, and it was like my trick, and I was like, yeah, they gave her five. She was so proud of herself that he fell for a hook, line, and sinker, and I was like, yeah. Because you don't realize uh, what these, these people, they, they don't have anything, but they'll give it to you. We had the opportunity to go to lunch with a family, and they actually cooked us lunch for their own food. And uh, some of these people, uh, more in Guatemala, I think, than they do here, they'll take out a loan or, you know, loan, borrow money from somebody to pay for your lunch to feed you, and you're just blown away. It affects you pretty good. You come back, and you look at all this junk you have, and you're like, why do I have all this? Do I need this? And it's, it's really hard when you come back, and you have a, a year shell shock, and you're like, what the heck am I doing, you know? I just want to get rid of all this. I'm going to go down there and live full time. Yeah. The success is if uh, everybody goes and has a great time, and you know, even if not one thing of the church is made, if everybody is able to relate and talk with somebody, and you know, feel like, hey, I met somebody new, I uh, was able to reach across this barrier of culture, language, and all that, and really bond with somebody and make a you know a new relationship, then I think that would be successful.